Hi, my name is Lorraine Watry and welcome to my studio. I am a watercolor artist and I've worked with watercolor for 26 years now and I thought I would start a new series of videos where I go over different tips, tricks and techniques for working with watercolor and hopefully these short videos will help you in your journey and if you have a question or a technique that you would like to see please comment below and I will try to accommodate that in a future video. Last week I went through uh, mixing colors together to get grays and browns and this week I thought I would go over some of the convenience grays that you can purchase and these are put out by Daniel Smith and uh, this is not a sponsored video. It, I just really like Daniel Smith pigments and uh, so I just thought I would show you um, some variety of grays that you can purchase now and for a long time there has been uh, Payne's gray was a convenience color that you could buy in many brands and that was something that a lot of people used. I never have had it on my palette and it was just partly because I wanted to mix my own grays and then I think um, something about Payne's gray just wasn't uh, a gray that I cared for so it just has never been on my palette and uh, I did a painting using majority of these grays not uh, Jane's gray or the sodalite but I think all of these and maybe not the gray titanium and I'll tell you why in a minute but I decided I wanted to uh, play with all of these different grays and give them a try um, so I did a painting and I will post that at the end of the video and I played with um, how all of these grays would look and I used most of them in that painting and normally I would suggest that you pick maybe one or two but not all of them together and it was sort of a, a challenge to see what it would how it would work together and then just I wanted to play with the the uh, variety. So I have on uh, my board here I have Sodalite Genuine, Jane's Gray, Alvaro's Fresco Gray, Alvaro's Caliente Gray, Gray Titanium, Joseph Z's Cool Gray, Joseph Z's Warm Gray, and Joseph Z's Neutral Gray. So as I go through these, I'll talk a little more about each um, paint, whether or not it has more than one pigment, and tell you what might be in the mix. So for Sodalite Genuine, it is a uh, one of the Primatex series by Daniel Smith, and it has it uh, listed on the tube here. And the Primatex series are all pigments that are from uh, Earth. Uh, from the earth. So there are minerals and uh, things like that that are natural pigments that they grind up and make into a, a paint. And I actually have Sodalite Genuine on my palette. So of all of the grays here, I have Sodalite Genuine and Alvaro's Fresco on my palette. The others I'm keeping um, in a drawer for when I want them. So the Sodalite Genuine is a as I said in the last video, and I did show uh, that color in the last video, if you uh, load up, and I'll just kind of dab in a lot of pigment there, you can get it pretty close to black. But then as I pull it out, and I might even go ahead and put a little water with it, it will lighten and become, it's, it's, you, it's really kind of a medium gray, medium to dark gray. And then depending on how much water you put, down as it comes down you can lighten it. It is on the cooler side of gray. It's got a little blue uh, tint to it and that is a natural pigment and it's a, actually a mineral and I have uh, an example of that stone in my garden out back. I found it in a rock shop somewhere so it's kind of cool to, to see it in stone form as well. And um, it is granular and it is a single pigment because it's just made from the stone sodalite. So there's that one. And then Jane's Gray is a blend of ultramarine blue and burnt sienna. So that was uh, one of the colors that I suggested that you could make. And 
they have made it into a convenience mix. And so this is, because it's a convenience mix, they have mixed it so that it does not lean uh, toward blue necessarily or toward the burnt sienna. Um, they have made it sort of middle of the road. And here is the darker mix. And then I'll go ahead and pull it out. I probably could even make it darker. It's a little hard to sometimes get that initial color. And these are all, uh, all of this information about these pigments are available on the Daniel Smith website. So if there's more information you want about them, there's a lot of information available uh, on their website about this. And then Alvaro's Fresco is a purpley looking gray to me. And I showed that one in the last video, but I'll go ahead and show it again. And depending on how much pigment you have on your brush, you can get a medium to dark gray with it. It, it already is a little uh, more purple than both of these. And then I can pull it out a little bit. And I really like this one. This kind of has maybe taken the place of, um, or not the place of, but it, it kind of represents Payne's Gray on my palette because I have used it to go over um, colors with glazes and I then can basically push it back and make that, whatever that subject is, a little cooler. And uh, some of the color of the um, pigments below peek through. So Alvaro's Fresco is ultramarine blue, ultramarine violet, and some titanium white. So it is slightly opaque, and I'm trying to see, it's a semi-transparent, yeah. And so it's not, not um, too bad. Uh, that is something that I don't care for, is I don't like to use opaque pigments. I like the uh, white of the paper to glow um, through my paint and so it's just my personal choice. All right so this one is Alvaro's Caliente and it is definitely warmer than the Fresco. It is um, almost a neutral black. It is a warmer black for sure or gray and then as you pull it down and these are grays not blacks but it it has the could, if it's really dark out of the tube, feel like black. Let me get a little more up there. So that's the Caliente. And that one has, it has a uh, burnt sienna, ultramarine blue, and lamp black in it. So it does contain some black in this uh, mix. And uh, you can see I'm reading off the tube for what they have. Not all brands of paint have the colors listed, so it just kind of depends on uh, the brand of paint you're using, whether or not it does that. All right, so this is gray titanium, and gray titanium is an opaque or more opaque I didn't look to see if it was semi-transparent, but basically it's made with, it says, pigment uh, is gray titanium. So they take uh, titanium, uh, I believe the process is they take titanium white and then uh, they heat it, I believe, to turn it uh, kind of gray. I would, I would not swear on that though, so don't quote me because I may have that wrong. <laughs> All right, and it has a, it's more of a tan gray feel to it. But is, so it is a warmer gray. And then Joseph Z's cool gray is next. Let's see if I can get my brush to re-wet it. Okay, so that is definitely probably one of the cooler, um, more over in this area of, of the gray that I have out so far. And I'll go ahead and pull it down a little bit and use some water to thin it. And then the next one, oh, sorry, P 
pigments in here are cobalt, turquoise, quinacridone violet, and uh, lamp black. Okay, the next one is Joseph Z's warm gray. And as I said, there's more information about these colors on the Daniel Smith website. So you could find out whether they're semi-transparent or opaque or transparent and uh, whether or not they're staining or granulating. A lot of that information is available there. And then I can pull that down. And so this is uh, warmer than this has a little bit of a, a bluer feel to his warmer gray. So the warmer gray mix has uh, yellow ochre and uh, quinacridone violet and lamp black. And so these, from my understanding, were put together between the artist Alvaro Castanier and uh, Joseph Zabukovich with Daniel Smith. And they are grays that those two artists um, would often mix with those colors to get the, the gray mix that they liked. So that's kind of how this came about, I believe. And then we have Joseph uh, Z's neutral gray. And the neutral gray goes pretty dark to start off with. And then you can thin it to go uh, gray. And then this has ultramarine blue, bone black, and graphite gray in it. Now, for me, the uh, graphite gray in this makes it very um, opaque feeling and opaque looking. And um, so I don't believe in the painting that I show at the end that I used very much of it, if if any. I may have used a tiny bit somewhere, but uh, I liked some of the other mixes. Again, I didn't have uh, those two, I believe, in the painting, but I used uh, most of these others, plus some of the other um, Primatec uh, pigments that I had already and other colors, of course, in the painting. And uh, it was just kind of fun experimenting with such a variety of grays and uh, seeing what they could do together. So I will post that at the end. And I hope this was interesting to kind of see some options of some tube grays that you can purchase. Now, one of the things uh, before I end that if you're using a tube gray and it has more than two pigments in the mix, you just need to be cautious if you go to mix it with something else because once you get into the four to five pigment range, so say you mix um, this pigment with a color that already has two pigments, so now you're mixing basically five pigments together, you can start to get kind of that neutral, flat, muddy um, color mix that happens sometimes when you mix too many colors together. So I would just be cautious of that, but I hope you'll uh, give these a try. And if you're interested in trying them without purchasing a whole tube, Daniel Smith does have uh, color swatch um, cards available where they'll just have a little dab of the paint on the uh, swatch card and you can purchase one of those swatch cards and then get an idea of whether or not you want to buy um, the larger tube. So, um, I will uh, continue putting out uh, some tip and trick videos and if you have a thought on one that something about a watercolor tip trick or technique that you would like to see please comment below and I will uh, post this image at the end of the video and my painting that shows how I used a lot of the grays and I hope you have a good day see you next time bye